What's up YouTube? I'm Wayne with Wayne's Fish World. In this video, I'm going to try to reach out to you newbies out there. This video is not really for my subscribers that I really have, but I'm still going to try to, you know, reach out to everybody. But like I said, I really want to reach out to those guys who are just getting started in this hobby and they want to learn. That's why they searched this video. They said, you know, I want to learn how to take care of an aquarium. And hey, you found my video. So hopefully, sit back, relax, get some popcorn and drink or something. And I'm going to try to teach you. So, this video is about how to set up an aquarium, why to set up an aquarium, how to maintain your aquarium. Now, obviously, I'm not going to get into everything, but I'm just going to scratch the surface. This is my advice right here. <clears throat> have a plan. Quote Dustin one which Have a plan. A lot of people, when they get into this hobby, they want everything. They want this, they want that, and they want that. They see cichlids, they want cichlids. Once they get cichlids, they're tired of cichlids and they want salt water. Once they're tired of salt water, they want to jump back to the fresh water and etc. They're never happy with what they get. <clears throat> Don't make that mistake. Have a plan. And I gotta defend Dustin right now. A lot of people are hating him because he has dirt and because you know he's trying to sell his plant. Well, you know what? It's a free country. The dude can do whatever he wants. And honestly. A lot of you wouldn't know crap it wasn't for Dustin. A lot he got people into plants more than anybody else on YouTube, and you can say that's bull crap, but it's true. That's why you're subscribed to his channel and you and you dislike or you like his channel and you like his videos. Uh, so that's what I gotta say. I gotta defend Dustin because you know I like what he's doing. He's taking his hobby and he's bringing it to the next level. He's reaching out to all those subscribers, and you know you're watching his videos. So there you go. But you have to have a plan. You just can't jump into this hobby and expect to go with the flow. If you do that, you're more likely going to hit a brick wall and your tank's going to crash. And I'm guilty of that. And you know, a lot of my subscribers that hate me, who still watch my videos because they hate me, um, they're guilty of that too. They just won't show that on camera. So don't let that discard you. Don't expect your tank to look like New York Stilo or Mr. Saltwater Tank TV or King of DIY Joey or you know Church Hills Impact or uh, you know Vegas Surfer. You got one hell of a five gallon tank, man. That is sick as hell. So don't expect them to look like that. It takes time. These people have been in the hobby a while. They've learned and from their mistakes. They're going to. They made mistakes. They're just not going to show it on camera. Now some of them will, but. They're not going to show it on camera as much, and that's one thing I like about my channel. I show my mistakes. A lot of people, you know, hate and dislike my videos because, oh yeah, my dirt erupted. You know, black beard algae. But you know what? You know, in salt water, cyano, hair algae, um, diatoms. These things are natural. It's how a system establishes itself. They have to go through these stages. Um, and that would be my tank. I've got no black beard algae. The dirt's fine. Everything's good. But. Your tank has to go through stages, so don't let that discard you guys. Your tank is not going to you know, be amazing from the get-go. You have to learn. It's trial and error. It's a learning process. So my advice, go to Live Aquarium. I'll post a link right here in the video and in the description. That way you don't miss it. Go to Live Aquarium. Look at all the fish they have. Fresh water, salt water. Look at the invertebrates, the corals, everything. Now that's another thing. If you want salt water and you don't give a crap about fresh water, don't let that discard you. Don't go to fresh water if you don't want it. Go to salt water. If the guy at the local fish store says you don't, you can't have salt water, say screw you. I'm giving you money. Shut up. Do the research. If you're if you're dedicated to it, you can go for it. Don't let that discard you. Now I tell beginners, you know, try to stay away from salt water because it is a little more demanding, but it just takes a little bit more money. It takes a little bit more knowledge and a little more dedication. But if you are dedicated to it, you can achieve it. So go with what you like. Look at everything, all the possibilities. That way you know what you want. That way, say you like this guppy, but a year later you see this discus and you're like, wow, I want that, this guppy sucks. Do the research, guys. Find out what that fish needs. What tank size does it need? What pH? Where does it live at? What's it eat? Um, how big does it get? Stuff like that. If you can meet these demands, you might be able to get this fish. But like I said, 
find the easy, hardy to take care of fish. Find the, you know, live bearers, the tetras, and for saltwater, find the damsels, the clownfish, the butterflies, and angels, some fish that are really hard to kill. So that way you have a little more success. Take your, your tank step by step, guys. It is going to go through, through cycles, through changes. It's got to balance itself out. It's going to establish. It's just going to take time. And that's another thing. I'm going to quote that from New York Steelo. This hobby takes patience. I'm very sure. Well, I'm getting better. But it takes patience. If you don't have patience, you might as well not even jump into it. Because I'm telling you, you're going to run into problems. I don't care who you are, you're going to run into problems. And that's another thing. Go as big as possible. Bigger is better when it comes to this hobby. From ponds to freshwater to saltwater, bigger is better. And what I mean by that, if you have a 10 gallon tank, and you have something go wrong, it's gonna be, it's gonna go wrong faster because the water volume is smaller. But if you have a 55, a beautiful 125 gallon, a 220, a 300 gallon, something like that, it's gonna take longer for this disease, for this outbreak, or whatever it is to happen. Now, yeah, I'm not telling you to get a $300 and waste your paycheck and you know go broke. But if you can afford a 55 gallon, it's great. It's great for fresh water. It's, you know, a beginner, good size for salt work, but go as big as possible. And I don't mean go as big as possible. Yeah, I can afford a 300 gallon if I, you know, take a lot of money out of my bank, but can I afford to establish and maintain a 300 gallon? Yeah, I probably can, but a lot of my money be gone to somewhere I don't want it to go. So do the research on how much money it would take to maintain this thing from how much the lights will cost, how much the filter will cost, how much the media will cost, the replacement parts, um, this, I don't know, everything about the tank. Everything comes from maintenance, the food, to dosing like be ionic and fertilizer for plants. Do the research because I know a lot of you guys out there are newbies and you're around the age of you know 12 to 15 and around there. You're teenage guys, hell I'm 20 years old and I love this shit. So, <clears throat> some of you guys are old out there. I know some of you guys are in your 50s and your 70s. Well, I don't know about 70s, but there's bound to be some one of you guys out there in your 70s. But, you know, a lot of you guys are a lot older than me. And you're still into this stuff. And that's the thing. A lot of people that are like me and are still into this stuff, you know, they're dedicated. That's one thing you got to be with this stuff. You got to be dedicated. Don't, like I said, have a plan, find what you want, and stick to it. So... Once you get everything, I mean, it's, you just got to take it step by step. You know, if you can't afford everything, you know, save up for it. I know a lot of you guys don't work yet and you're on allowances. I don't know what your allowance is, but save up for it, guys. You know, put a little money away each week or how, I don't know what you can pay, but you know what I mean. Put a little money away step by step. Get your tank. Once you save up for that, get your filter. Once you save up for that, get your light. Get your heater. If you need an air stone, get your air stone, etc. Get what you need to get. Then get your fish. Get your rocks. Get your decoration. If you want plants, you can get that step by step and such, so on and so forth. But take it step by step. And once your tank has everything it needs to maintain the fish and keep it alive, go ahead and get some fish. But don't get 50 of them. Don't get 100. Don't get seven. You know, get a few. Get one or two. Put them in your tank. Let them build some ammonia up. Can see there are cycles in your tank. There's a nitrogen cycle. I'm not going to cover it in this video. It's a good video to make, a nitrogen cycle video. Um, but Google search that. Uh, Church Hills Impact, I think he has one. Check it out right here in the description uh, and in the video. So the nitrogen cycle. Every tank has a nitrogen cycle. And once you put fish in there, they're going to put off pollutants in the water. Bacteria have to establish and grow to break down these pollutants into less toxin forms. So basically, the toxin goes from ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. And nitrate can get into a nitrogen gas form, but that's too complicated, and I'm not going to go into that right now. But just take it step by step, guys. Once you've got two fish in there, let's say you got a 55-gallon tank, all right? You put some few hardy tetras in there, maybe five, all right? Next week, you're going to get a pair of rams. Go get them, all right? You want some koi catfish, go get three koi catfish. A couple days later or a week later, get three more koi catfish, all right? Say your last fish you want in the tank or a breeding pair of angels. Get your two breeding pair of angels at once. Boom. It's done. 
take it step by step, guys. Patience. Patience, have a plan, and just, that's my thing. New York Steel says patience, Dustin says have a plan. I'm gonna say dedication. That's what it takes. Patience, have a plan, dedication. And a little bit of money, but you know. So after that, guys, you're pretty much set. So just do the research, that's all I can tell you. Do the research, take it step by step, and have patience. And if you want salt water, guys, if the, pit, if the pet store says you can't have salt water, say screw you, I'm giving you money, be happy. Teach me how to do it. And if they're not teaching you how to do it, you come see me and I'll tell you how to do it. Um, and if you're new, here's a good site. Uh, Fish Tank TV. Go to that. There's Dark Star Aquatics. There's, uh, what's that? Fired Up. Uh, what the, I'm sorry, guys. Fired Up. Ning.com. I'm sorry. If I said it wrong, you put it in, and you put it in the comments and tell me I said it wrong. But video's getting long, guys. And I'm starting to ramble. But take it step by step. Have patience. Have dedications, and you're gonna go wrong once in a while. And if you go wrong and you make a video about it, and you have your fish die, and the people ha hate your video, and they leave a nasty comment, tell them to screw you. Comment, rate, and subscribe. Later.